Ah, that putative medieval warm period. It was local and didn't have much effect. Or it was global, much warmer than today, and proof that carbon dioxide doesn't cause global warming. It depends on what you believe, doesn't it? Well, as in all areas of science, no, it depends on what the evidence shows. So in this video I want to look at the evidence for the medieval warm period that answers three basic questions. Was it global? Was it warmer than today? And what does all this matter anyway? And of course along the way we'll look at the strange and divisive battle over the hockey stick. But let's start with a familiar face. 700 scientists from more than 400 institutions in more than 40 countries in the last 20 years have contributed to papers that I know about and can on notice list saying that the medieval warm period, which is well known in history and archaeology as it is in climate science, was real, was global and was noticeably warmer than the present. Moncton was as good as his word and when I asked him for the list he gave it to me. Unfortunately, I'm probably the only person who ever asked him because the list doesn't live up to his claim. The 700 scientists who contribute to the papers listed don't say the medieval warm period was real, global and noticeably warmer than today or anything like it. If you don't believe me, you'll find the list of papers on the co2science.org website, so by all means read through them and see how many you have to read before you can find a single one that says what Moncton claims it says. Of course, there's no doubt there was a warming event around 1100 to 800 years ago. That's been known for at least 50 years. The question has always been, was this localised warming or was it a global event? At first, the warming was thought to have been limited to the North Atlantic and Western Europe because the evidence from historical records was so clear. Even now we have a lot of evidence from the Northern Hemisphere, but very little from the Southern Hemisphere, but I think it's fair to say that the more evidence that comes in, the more it does support the idea that this event was global. So the next question is, was it warmer than today? Craig Idso believes it was. He's the man who collected all those papers that Moncton misquoted, but only some of them quantify the amount of warming during the medieval warm period, and not all of those compared it to the recent period of warming. A proper analysis has to look at studies that are geographically diverse and compare the medieval warm period to the present, not 20, 30 or 50 years ago. That was first done in 1998 for the Northern Hemisphere by Mann, Bradley and Hughes, and the hockey stick was born. The following year they published another paper extending the timeline back to 1000 AD. Actually, it's only a hockey stick if you eliminate the error bars, because there was still a lot of uncertainty in the proxies used. In 2004 various flaws were highlighted in a rebuttal paper by Steve McIntyre and Ross McKittrick. They criticised the over-reliance on tree ring data and suggested the hockey stick shape was created artificially because of an incorrect statistical analysis. To sort out the controversy, there were two investigations. Congress commissioned a report by the National Academy of Sciences, which confirmed a lot of the uncertainties in the proxies used, but found the conclusions plausible. The House Committee on Energy and Commerce commissioned a report by statistics professor Edward Wegman. The Wegman report is controversial because it delved into areas outside of Wegman's expertise as a statistician and a lot of it was later found to have been plagiarised, in part from Wikipedia. For this reason it was withdrawn by the journal in which it was published. But I can't see that this invalidates Wegman's conclusions on the statistics, which after all is his field of expertise. He concluded that the main point of controversy was that Mann, Bradley and Hughes, collectively known as MBH, had centred the mean for their reconstruction in the 20th century, rather than the entire timeline. MBH themselves accepted the errors that were validated and corrected their reconstruction in 2008. I won't go into the details of either congressional report because even by the time they were commissioned they were largely irrelevant. Several more reconstructions had been published by then, and these superseded MBH 1999 using a wealth of new proxy data with and without the controversial tree rings. Whether you want to continue calling these reconstructions hockey sticks doesn't really matter. What climatologists see is the same pattern in all of them, warming during the medieval warm period, and then a steep acceleration of warming at the end of the 20th and early 21st centuries. 
Perhaps the best sign of how seriously climate science critics are taking these later reconstructions is that they're not being debunked because of errors and flaws or accusations of fraud. They're being doctored. Take, for example, the most recent reconstruction by Esper et al. using tree rings from northern Scandinavia. The study prompted this headline in the Daily Mail. Tree rings prove climate was warmer in Roman and medieval times than it is now. Well, in northern Scandinavia at least. And the Daily Mail has a graph, purportedly taken from the paper, to prove it. And the story was written by someone who's been designated the Daily Mail's science reporter. But if we check Esper's paper, no surprise, it doesn't agree with the headline. This is the reconstruction shown in the paper, with recent temperatures from northern Scandinavia shown in red. In the mail story and other blogs, the recent temperature data have been erased. Airbrushing out recent temperature rises has become something of an art form among bloggers. Here's a 2,000 year reconstruction, as explained by meteorologist Art Horn. Uh, back in the medieval warm period, it was as warm or warmer than today, back in part of the Roman Empire. In the Roman warm period, it was as warm or warmer than today. Horn seems to draw this conclusion from the graph he shows. I tracked it down to Craig Idso's website, CO2 Science, where it was adapted from a 2010 paper by Lundqvist. But how did Horn conclude that the reconstruction shows a warmer medieval warm period when the author himself doesn't? Lundqvist says the last two decades have been possibly hotter than at any time over the last 2,000 years. Can't Lundqvist read his own graph? No, it turns out this isn't Lundqvist's graph. It's been doctored. That's what adapted means in this case. The high temperatures of the last few decades have been airbrushed out. Here's the original as it appeared in Lungfist's paper. Here are two more 2,000-year reconstructions doing the rounds of the blogosphere. Several folks have tried to step back from the man hockey team approach and to use a more fair selection of less controversial proxies. Two such researchers are Moberg, who is generally considered a strong global warming supporter, and Lowell, who is more of a skeptic. And lo and behold, it comes right back to where we started. We get the medieval warm period around 1000, we get a little ice age, and the temperature day is similar or even lower than those in the Middle Ages. Let's take the graph on the left first, which narrator Warren Meyer says comes from Moberg's 2005 study. But of course it's been adapted. If we look at Moberg's original, we can see that the instrumental temperature data showing late 20th century warming has been erased. Worse than that, Moberg's proxy data that he says in the caption goes back as far as 1979, is extended to make it look as though it goes up to the year 2000. The scale's been changed. You can see that more clearly when I match the two graphs up. Notice how the doctored graph ends short of the recent period of warming, but the date has been changed to 2000. So in the doctored graph, 30 years of warming is simply airbrushed out and the scale moved up to make it look as though it's a record that reaches to the present. As for the second graph, it comes from a 2007 paper by Craig Lurl that's been widely circulated on the net. It seems to show proxy temperature data going up to the year 2000 and a medieval warm period that's clearly warmer than the present. But Lowell misunderstood the paleoclimatologist convention of using 1950 as a benchmark to denote the present and wrongly calibrated the temperature data to 2000. So his graph once again misses the recent decades of strong warming. After this was pointed out, Lowell corrected the errors in a 2008 paper, producing a reconstruction that this time ended in the correct date. When recent temperature records are added, his reconstruction, shown in pink here, conforms to others and shows the same familiar pattern. Warming during the medieval period, then rapid warming at the end of the 20th century, culminating in higher temperatures. Finally, here's a graph that must be familiar. If we look back further in time, before the Little Ice Age, we find a balmy golden era when temperatures were higher than they are today, a time known to climatologists as the medieval warm period. This graph shows the medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age. But it's hard to create a panic about warming when temperatures today are below historical levels. About 800 years ago, they had the medieval warm period. This is mainstream science. This is not me coming up with alternative stuff. Believe it or not, this poster child for the medieval warm period comes from the arch-nemesis of climate science critics, the IPCC. First, a few facts about this graph. 
This isn't a quantitative reconstruction, it's a schematic. There's no temperature scale on the y-axis, and most of the data seems to come from just one location. I say it seems because no one knows for sure where the data for this sketch comes from. McIntyre concluded it probably came from a 1965 paper by Lamb, which was mostly based on the temperature record of central England. Phil Jones also concluded it must have come from Lamb, combined with an approximation of temperatures in Western Europe based on historical and anecdotal evidence. So whatever the author of this sketch might claim, this doesn't represent global temperatures because it's not based on global data. Finally, the graph ends in 1950. As Lowell discovered when he had to make his correction, that's what before present means in paleoclimatology, as well as in geology and geography. Under other circumstances, this kind of IPCC sloppiness would be labelled sketchgate, but instead the schematic has been accepted as an unalterable truth and become the basis for a huge conspiracy theory. Perhaps not understanding that science always moves forward as new evidence comes along, the critics couldn't understand why the graph took on a completely different shape in an updated IPCC report ten years later. Their conclusion was that there must be a plot to abolish the medieval warm period. Just 11 years later, in 2001, this graph appeared, no medieval warm period. A small cadre of climate researchers set out to eliminate the medieval warm period from the historical record. The supposed official view, which is that they've abolished the medieval warm period. Of course, this conspiracy theory makes no sense in view of the huge amount of research that's been done in unveiling the extent of the medieval warm period. But just to explain to those who are still puzzled about why the shape of the graph changed, here it is again. This was based mostly on a temperature record from just one location in central England. This was based on data across the entire northern hemisphere. This schematic ended in 1950, long before the recent period of warming began. This reconstruction ended in the 1990s and included some of the recent warming. This reconstruction is a schematic of unknown provenance with no temperature scale. This was a first attempt at a quantitative reconstruction based on a limited number of proxies with a very large margin of error. And this reconstruction has itself been replaced by even more detailed and accurate reconstructions. The thing is, all scientific understanding progresses from uncertainty towards certainty and is fraught with flaws and inaccuracies along the way. Yes, all science, from an understanding of what our universe looks like, to the climatic history of the Earth, to the makeup of the atom. As I showed in my video, the scientific method made easy. If we take the most illustrative science, cartography, we can see very clearly how our understanding of the shape of the North American continent changed over a period of 500 years. Every single map is imperfect, and it's still imperfect, but at the same time our understanding of the shape got better and better. There's nothing wrong with this schematic as long as you understand that it is just a schematic and it doesn't include the recent period of warming. What you can't do is treat it as an unalterable truth about global temperatures and pretend that it includes the last 35 years of warming, which, of course, is exactly what a lot of people are doing. And now we come to the last question. What does all this mean anyway? Why are the critics of climate science so determined to have a warmer medieval warm period? Well, let's ask them. We cannot safely say that today's temperatures are exceptional so that there's nothing special about today's temperatures. OK, but you don't need a congressional inquiry, an investigation by the National Academy of Sciences and an internet squabble to tell you that. A basic geology textbook could explain there's nothing special about today's temperatures. The Earth has been much colder in the past and much warmer in the past and even the same in the past. Geologists have been researching and banging on about extreme climates in the past for at least two centuries. Never mind the medieval warm period, what about the Eocene Thermal Optimum 55 million years ago when the Arctic Ocean was completely ice-free and subtropical? If all you're looking for is evidence of hotter climates in the past, what about the Permian-Triassic when global temperatures soared more than 14 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than today? So unless the climate critics are completely clueless about the climatic history of our planet, surely they can't be struggling for examples of warmer climates in the past.
So let's try another reason. We can say, because everybody agrees this, that it was nature that caused the medieval climate warming. There's virtually nobody who would try to maintain that we were having enough of an influence on climate then to cause that warming. Joanne Nova says... Temperatures were higher 1,000 years ago and cooler 300 years ago. We started warming long before cars and power stations were invented. There's little correlation with CO2 levels. But of course no one suggested that the medieval warm period was caused by CO2 levels. And as I've explained many times in my videos, carbon dioxide isn't the only factor that drives global temperatures. I'm surprised Joanne Nova doesn't know that. She's got one of the most widely read climate blogs out there. But then this has been explained so often to those who think climate science is all about CO2 that I'm sure they understand it by now. The feigned ignorance is probably because, well, if you can't use the old didn't have SUVs in the Middle Ages argument, then what else is there? What caused the temperature to be higher in the medieval warm period than it is now? Could it have been turbocharged handcarts? If critics want to use the medieval warm period to show there are causes of climate change other than CO2, yet again climatologists have been explaining this for decades. And yes, that fact can still be found in every basic geography textbook. I've listed the main factors affecting climate in at least three of my videos, so this is true whether the medieval warm period was warmer or cooler than today. So if it wasn't carbon dioxide... What was the cause of the medieval warm period? Well, climatologists think a combination of factors now looks likely. But the climate science critics do have an explanation. So, if we assume that there were not enough 4x4s and SUVs driving around in the medieval warm period, what natural causes might there have been for the climate fluctuations over the past thousand years which we now have really rather good grounds I hope you'll agree for suspecting may actually have occurred. Well now we'll go on and have a look at one possible guilty party and that's the Sun which is where after all the heat comes from. It just so happens that during the medieval warm period there was a, 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 a period of uh, increased solar radiation. And it is the sun that uh, does it, not man. When sunspot activity is compared to temperature changes over the same period, a remarkable correlation appears. If that's the reason critics want to give for the medieval warm period, and some researchers agree, then we can say with confidence that it can't be the reason for the rise in temperatures we've seen over the last 35 years. Because solar irradiation has been relatively stable for the last 50 years and has even been in decline. So something else must be pushing up temperatures. And finally, there's this argument. In the 13th century, we were probably 7 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than we are now, and it was a very prosperous time for mankind. A balmy golden era. It was rather nice, and big cathedrals were built all over Europe. In fact, wherever you describe this warm period, it appears to be associated with witches. With witches? Are you sure? Well, where was it nice and associated with witches? We have established colonies in southern Greenland. Late in the 10th century, the Vikings settled in Greenland. They found fertile fields and navigable waters teeming with codfish and seals. OK, it was nice in Greenland, and the Vikings colonized it. Where else? We're having a heat wave. In Europe, this was the great age of the cathedral builders. Yes, we already know things were nice in Western Europe, vineyards in England and so on. Back then it was warmer, there was more trees. It was a very good farming land, very fertile. Hang on, you're talking about Greenland again. I want to know what the rest of the world was like during the medieval warm period. It may be very nice for Greenlanders, but most people don't live in Greenland. How come we're never given examples of balmy, wonderful riches anywhere else in the world? Well, the reason could be because not everywhere was like Western Europe. One of the best known and best researched examples is North America, which certainly seems to have warmed during the medieval warm period, but it also got a lot drier. So dry that researchers are referring to conditions as a mega drought. And as more research is done into the medieval warm period, coincident drought is turning up in areas as far afield as China and Amazonia. And this is exactly what computer modelers had predicted as the consequence of the current increase in temperatures, an increasing drought spreading out from the southwestern United States that will eventually encompass much of the grain belt. 
and as in the medieval warm period, other parts of the world will also become drier. But here's the good news that somewhat vindicates those who say the medieval warm period was a golden balmy era full of riches. Greenland's going to be lovely.